Hello, Rick here with a quick look into the Isomagnetic Disintegrator. A Starfleet weapon designed and deployed in 2375 during the height of the Dominion War. Starfleet prefers not to develop devices that solely have a military application. Even its most famous offensive gadget, the Phaser, is a multi-purpose device that has more going for it than the more common disruptors, hence its preference by the United Federation of Planets. However, this shoulder-mounted launcher has no other use aside from making things it points at go boom. The device is usually a part of the armoury of vessels that would be expected to engage in combat. A higher quantity for sure during the war, but more specifically for those who would be deployed groundside, outside of ship-to-ship -ship or boarding action combat. The weapon was over a metre long, at 128 centimetres, and to be fired from the shoulder while the user looked through the targeting reticule to gauge the shot. The trigger was on the very front of the grip of the pipe, and the rear overhang of the weapon was pretty much just there to provide a counterweight. Because of its futuristic construction, it weighs a surprisingly light 3.85 kilograms and had an effective range of 5 to 145 metres. However, you really do not want to test it at only 5 metres, even 10 metres is still rated as dangerously close. It also has multiple settings from low yield to, as the name implies, disintegration. The basic premise was to create a weapon akin to a rocket launcher or bazooka, in that it would fire and cause an explosive effect for damage to structures, or to take out a grouped enemy force. By utilising the concussive force of an explosion, it also stood a higher chance of bypassing Borg personal shielding. Like all the Star Trek gadgets, it is given a science fiction twist to be more than just firing a missile. Well, while researching for this video, however, I found several alternate interpretations as to how this weapon worked although they do both agree on some principles, so I'll just recount both to you. The first description cites that it does indeed use ammunition. A miniaturised missile pod is slotted into the chamber which carries several missiles. When one is fired, the next cycles into the launcher's place until all are depleted and the disintegrator needs reloading. The missiles themselves carry the explosive charge and can be set to different levels in the chamber. This comes with a couple of noted drawbacks however, the first is that it requires the ammunition to be conveyed with the weapon, and that adds weight and bulk to its use. The second option is that reloading makes you a target if done in the open, as does quite simply shouldering and aiming the disintegrator. The other method is a rather more in keeping with other Starfleet devices and does not use missiles but instead draws from a charge pack that can be swapped out. This pack has enough for about 40 shots and creates a bolt of isomagnetic energy. This has the effect of disrupting the magnetic fields of a target and on its lowest setting produces a kind of blast on impact that overloads and stuns the target's nervous system. The higher settings eventually just cause a big boom in addition to this, leaving a 1 meter crater. Because of the concussive blast however, even the stun setting carries risks of greater injury when the target may be blasted to the floor. Both options in how this device works agree that it does require ammunition of a form that is consumed far quicker than a phaser and that different yield blasts are produced. They also share the common feature of it being a slower, heftier weapon to use and the fact that it does produce heavy recoil, something again hand phasers do not. Now, earlier I mentioned that it was for ground engagements only, so hopefully now you can see why. The distance you need to fire this safely and not get caught in the blast is not conducive to combat inside the narrow corridors of a starship, and setting off blasts in a pressurised vessel might lead to unexpected hull breaches, even with the durability of corridors. Overall, it's a weapon that does not see much use, but would provide an advantage in the field encounters in full-on warfare. 
Outside of attacking large structures, the rare vehicle or clusters of enemies, it has little application and is entirely built for battle. Therefore, they are a rare sight in Starfleet, but you never know when an armory officer might spot the ideal use for one. I think we would see them far more commonly if vehicular combat was more common in Star Trek, but with how far technology has progressed, such machinery is seldom seen outside of the shuttles or maybe suborbital fighter craft. Thanks for watching this breakdown on the isomagnetic disintegrator. I've been Rick and until next time, thanks again and goodbye.